Okay. We're live. Here's Charlie preparing for her yoga. Welcome to Red Pants. <laughs> um, morning, Erin. Making sure things are where they need to be. There goes Charlie. <laughs> ah, Wednesday morning. Uh, time for some Bikram. Last Bikram of the Red Pants live stream. This is our last one together. Friday we're going to do vinyasa. Um, so it's a little bittersweet. And I'm really looking forward to just being here and very mindfully present um, while teaching even more so than I feel like I usually am just because this is it. <laughs> so um, we'll get started. Feet together at the top of the mat for pranayama, standing deep breathing. Do a mindful check-in for your posture. Feet are together or as far apart as is comfortable, just not more than hip width. Rock a bit, back, back and forth from your heels to toes and side to side. You want that weight distributed in the back body, so over the heels. So maybe even lift and wiggle the toes to kind of bring that weight back on your feet, onto the heels. Hips stacked over the back. Shoulders rolled up and then back and down. Hands clasped together, really grip the webbing tight together and then tuck them under your chin. Take at least one big breath, a nice big exhale and a sigh, open mouth, ex and a nice big inhale and open mouth, exhale, sigh it out. And we will begin. So let's inhale here together. Bring the elbows up, up, up towards the ceiling. Chin is level to the ground and exhale. Gently push the chin back. Open or er, inhale here. Open mouth, exhale. Elbows come to wrap around in the front, facing the front, not a back bend. Level straight spine. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, we'll do two more. Really lift out of the waist and lift the chest as you inhale, lift the elbows up, chin is level to the ground, exhale, chin goes back, elbows gonna wrap around in front. Inhale. Exhale. Change, relax the shoulders and the arms. Take a breath, samastitihi, and let's move into half moon pose. Inhale, arms overhead. And just stretch from side to side to warm up. Oh, to the left, to the right. We're also gonna go to the front and back. So just slight back bend there, slight forward fold. Take a few movements and motions with your spine. Warm it up. Go counterclockwise, clockwise. I'm going to grab my blocks because I'm really going to want to use them today for my folds. <laughs> Hi, Carmen. Carter's golf practice. Yay. Okay, let's meet in the middle for half moon. Arms overhead, 
Take a steeple grip here. So interlace the fingers and release the index fingers. Inhale out of the waist. Find a lot of length from your toes to the top of your head. And exhale. We're going down to the right. Hips to the left. Breathe through this. Every inhale can reset and find a lift in neutral position and exhale more of a fold and really push out to the left with your hips. And change, inhale, come up halfway. Meet in the middle, exhale to the left now. Breathe through it. Notice where you're tight. I'm shaking my head to make sure my neck is loose. Inhale, find some length. Exhale, fold. Push the hips to the right as your body falls to the left. And change. Come back up to the middle. Inhale, find length, length, length. Lift the chest, lift the eyes up towards the sky. On an exhale, push the hips forward towards the front. Inhale, lifts the chest. Exhale, pushes the hips. And that creates a lift in the spine even as we fold and bend back. Change, inhale, come on up. On an exhale, pull the belly in, come down halfway for your first forward fold. I'm gonna release my hands here, grab the blocks, and first forward fold of the morning for me. And boy, I've got some tightness in my back from painting a ceiling. <laughs> so I'm gonna pedal out my feet here, coming high on the toes and bend the knees. So just, Work with your forward fold if you've already been ready for it. Bend the knees enough that your belly rests on your thighs. Drop the head. Shake it out. Nod if you need to. Shake. And when you're ready, making sure the belly is glued to the thighs. Find a grip or a bind with your hands by wrapping them around your legs. You can give yourself even just a hug behind your knees if you want, or slide the palms down. I've got some, I want to get a splinter down your legs and lift the hips to the sky as your head and neck hang. And change. Bring the arms up overhead. Inhale up, exhale, let it go. And roll the shoulders, take a breath here. And we move into Utkatasana Awkward Pose. So inhale, arms up at shoulder height. Step the feet about six inches apart or hip width apart. Two fists together should fit between your feet. Inhale, find lift in your chest, shoulders drop away from the ears. Exhale, sit back in your chair. Butt goes back, arms go forward. Breathe here, really pull the belly in. Take a look at your toes, wiggle your toes so that you know your weight is on your heels and the balls of your feet. Breathe, sit back, belly in, arms stretch forward. And change. Inhale all the way up. Arms are still strong and engaged high on the toes here. The stretch in the front of my ankles feels so good. I'm going to stay high on my toes. Heels lifted as high as they can. 
focus on one spot in front of you and sit back in that chair again with heels lifted as high as you can get them. If the heels really start to drop or you have trouble with balance, don't worry about sitting back so far. This is really high up on the toes like we're ballerinas. And change, inhale up, exhale, drop the heels, keep the arms engaged, lift the heels again about an inch, squeeze the knees together and that space between your inner thighs, zip that up, squeeze it, squeeze the belly in, and then slide down once more. The butt lowers down to the heels, Keep those shoulders relaxed away from the ears. Back out of it if you need to. Just keep the legs strong and engaged. And if you go down all the way, come back up just a little to really turn the legs on. And then inhale it up, change, let everything go. Bring those feet back together, drop the shoulders, take a breath here. Okay, let's move into eagle. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, bring the right one under the left. Give yourself a little hug if you need to. Twist side to side, feels good. Ugh. And then continue this hug here with shoulders, with elbows stacked over one another. Or take more of a bind by wrapping your hands together. Bringing your arms together like ropes at the elbow, forearm, wrist hands together. I'm going to inhale and lift the arms. I really need a stretch in my upper back today. Oh, from painting. So I'm going to inhale that up, but then exhale and bring it down. Squeeze the elbows in towards the midsection, middle of the belly here. Sit back in your chair and then come up high on those right toes because we're going to balance on the left leg. Right knee up as high as you can get it before you cross it over the left. Breathe here. Wobble around if you need to. Drop those toes for a kickstand if you need to. But sit back in that chair. The lower you sit, the better you can balance. Pull the belly in. Breathe here. Legs wrapped together like ropes, arms wrapped together like ropes. And change, let it go. Inhale, arms up, feet back together here. Exhale, left arm under right this time. Again, I'm gonna move, do some side to side. Stretch out the side body. Hang on to the spine or begin to wrap them together like ropes. Inhale, arms up. Feel that mobility in your upper back and the stretch in your shoulders. But exhale, bring the arms down, elbows towards the belly button in one line. Sit back in the chair. Really bend the knees, sit back. Such a good stretch in the back of the calves and in the Achilles. And then we'll get that left knee up as high as we can before crossing it over the right. Squeeze those thighs together. Sit back as far as you need here as you can in your chair for balance. Squeeze it all together. Sit back. And change, let it go. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, arms down. Take a breath here and grab a drink of water if you want before we move on to the next couple poses. I'm gonna grab my water, I don't have it with me right now. Okay, so standing head to knee is our next pose. I usually have been facing the front for this one. I think I'll face the side this time. Actually, yeah, I'll face the side just for something a little different. So you're gonna stand into Dasana here, feet together, 
weight over your heels. So your booty hips want to be over the heels, shoulders over there. And then this way you're not leaning forward or falling forward. Everything's more towards the back, including the back of the head in that one straight line. Palms face the front, chest is lifted. And with a strong standing left leg, we lift the knee up to hip height if possible. If you are still starting out, you can stay balanced on your toe right here on your right toes, or just play with the up and down or bring it up all the way. So stay right here to begin to really feel an opening in the lower back and to prepare for bending over. We'll inhale out of the waist, create um, length in the waist, and then lead with the chest to bring your upper body down to meet your leg and pull the belly button in. That creates opening in the back. And hang on to either your thigh, your calf, or all the way down to your foot. Standing on that strong left leg. Find one spot to focus on, and you can cradle the right foot in your hand, and if you want to take it a little further, keep that belly button pulled in, shoulders away from the ears, we'll rise up about two inches or so, and then kick that right leg out. Breathe here. Change, let that go. Inhale back up, come down the way we started. Let's take a breath and reset in the center. Now we're gonna stand strong on the right leg, take the left and bring that knee up to hip height or you can just come up high on the toes wherever you are today in your practice. If you've got the knee up and you're balancing comfortably here, we can inhale, find length out of the waist and then on an exhale, lead with the chest, pull the belly in and find your grip along your calf, ankles or toes. Find one spot to look at in front of you. If you've got a basket weave grip under your foot. And a steady standing leg. You can inhale it up a few inches. Exhale and kick that foot out. Keep the belly in. And change. Let that go. Reset. Inhale the breath in. Exhale the breath out. Samas Dtihi here. We move into dancer. Inhale. Left arm up. Right palm goes out. You're ready to receive that right foot in your palm. Let's warm up the hips a bit with just that lift that we just did with the knee. And then a kick back, swing back, turn on the glutes with that backward swing and then receive the foot in your hand and stay right here. Set your strong foundation. And when you're ready, if you want to move on, kick back into that right hand with your right foot. It's a kick back and then a lift up and the lift up is what propels the upper body down. And change, come on out. Inhale, arms up with a breath, exhale, let it go. I'm gonna to turn to the other side now. So we'll stand, take a moment in some DTE. <clears throat> let that last side go. We're here for a new side. Inhale, left, uh, right arm up this time. Left palm goes out. We're gonna warm up the hips. Knee lift there, kick back. The kickback turns on the glutes. So just make sure you're checking in that that's happening. Sometimes our glutes <laughs> need to be woken up <laughs> the same way our minds do. Okay, so with a steady gaze, kick back, left foot in your left hand, kick first and lift towards the ceiling with the foot, which creates movement in the upper body to come down. And change, oh, come on up with that. Both arms up for a minute, and then exhale, let them go. Get a little loose there. 
on that exhale, letting everything go. We really want to be mindful of that tension and balance between the, the concentration and tightness, tautness that it takes, especially in standing bow. The whole idea is to be taut like a bow, um, a string in a bow. So let that go with some looseness as we change into other postures. So coming back to the back of the mat for balancing stick. Inhale here. Exhale. Take a breath, and then on the next inhale, arms go up overhead. We want a steeple grip again with our hands, so interlace the hands, let go of the index fingers. And with arms overhead like this, your chest is automatically going to be more lifted, but the only thing is you don't want to pop the belly out or make it soft. So pull the belly in, lift the arms, and then make sure his shoulder blades are sliding down your back, and that will create a bit more of a bend in the elbows. Step forward on the left leg, come to balance, high on your right toes, breathe here. You can stay right here, imagine one straight line between those fingertips and the lifted right toes, and as you lift the toes even more, again like with a bow, standing bow, or dancers, the lift in the back brings the lower body down, working together like a pendulum. Lift that back heel, point the toes, stretch the fingers forward, one strong, tight line between toes and fingers, and change. Bring that right leg back, step the left to meet the right, and then forward on the right foot. So again, one nice straight line between fingertips and toes. Inhale to prepare, exhale and the lift of those toes brings the upper body down. Heel lifts, toes point, fingers point, stretch them apart. Breathe, stretch, and change. Left leg back, right back meets the left. Exhale, arms down. Here's a great spot to take a drink of water, loosen up. Loosen across the shoulders. You see a few more comments come in. I'm going to read those. <laughs> All right. So, Aaron, are you not at Carter's golf practice as Carmen is? And it sounds like doing some modified yoga at golf practice. <laughs> I'm sorry your hips are tight. Mine aren't bothering as much me as much today, probably because my back and shoulders are tight from painting. So it's like get loose in one area by tightening another, I guess. I don't know. Okay. Let's begin this next round. A lot of folds coming. In fact, I'm going to get my blocks ready for the folds that are coming. <laughs> and yeah, Erin, if your hips are tight, blocks are going to be your good friends today. All right, let's move into separate leg forward fold. So we begin top of the mat, feet together. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, step it out, arms at a T. Toes face the front, feet are parallel. Um, I'm going to bend my knees and just that's really stretching my ankles more than anything. And if you have tight hips, you can just kind of rock the hips side to side to get those ready as well for this fold. Ooh, there's a pop. <laughs> okay, so we've loosened all the joints up from ankles to knees to hips here. Arms are out of the T. We're going to inhale. Length lift in the chest, pull the belly in now as you exhale, pull belly in, pull belly in, and come down at least halfway here. Arms are still at the T. This is where I'm going to drop my hands and grab the blocks. You can keep the arms at a T for some arm strength, and then just rock the hips back and forth here. Again, uh, with every exhale, pull that belly in. A belly in is going to open up that back and in turn, open up the hips as you continue your fold. And so you can rest hands on your block here on the floor, or 
If you're still working on that T, they can come behind you, find some kind of bind in the back of the legs. And then you'll drop the head, nod it yes, shake it no. With every inhale, lift the chest, maybe come out of the fold a bit. With every exhale, pull down, find that grip with your hands behind your feet or hands behind your legs or sliding down to the feet. Find a grip and it pulls on the exhale. Lift the hips on the inhale. Pull your upper body down on the exhale. Eventually, maybe the crown of your head can touch the floor between your legs. Your gaze will be behind you and between your legs to the back. Okay, let's come out of that, loosen it up, come at least to halfway here, and if you turn on, you lift your arms, turn on the core as you lift up and out of that. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, arms down. We'll go right into prep for triangle. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, step it. Step it. Arms in the T, spin on that right heel now and bend at the knee. My um, legs are about a leg length apart and yours might not be quite as wide. Although one way to find a little more width and depth in this posture is to take that straight leg, the, the hip on the straight leg side and ask it just to come down. There's really not a lot of force there. It's just gravity pulling it down and your leg will bend knee will bend on the right even more. So find that, find your leg stance first, arms are at the T and then we're just gonna tick tock the arms at six and 12. And then use that right hand along the inner right thigh to lower yourself down even more. Activate the thighs, imagine you're squeezing a ball, a, ball, a beach, sorry, a beach ball, inflated beach ball between your thighs as you keep lowering down on the right and look up to that lifted left hand. Breathe here. And change, inhale, arms up, turn the toes in on the right side, turn toes out on the left. And again, start by bending that left knee. But if you wanna take it further, ask the right hips to come down along with it. And if your knee starts to bend past your ankle, just move your foot out and suddenly find yourself in a wider stance. Inhale, arms up to a T. Chest lifts, tick tock the arms, six and 12. And then lower, using the left wrist along the inner left thigh, squeeze those thighs together. Lower the upper body down and then turn and gaze up at your lifted right hand. Breathe here. Mm, change, let's inhale, arms up. All the way to the top of the mat, up and together, back down. Move into separate leg, standing head to knee. Inhale, arms up. Uh, find prayer hands as you step that right foot out. Prayer hands here with one thumb crossed over the other. I will be using my blocks, so I'm glad that they're next to me here, and you might want to use yours as well, especially with tight hips or hamstrings. We're going to rotate on the heels, everything over to the side. Arms are in prayer, hands are in prayer. Bend that right knee as much as you need to, to carefully, mindfully dive over that leg. Here's where I'll grab my blocks. I'm going to frame my foot with the blocks on either side of it. So my right foot's between the blocks. And I'm just gonna stay here halfway. Um, notice the straight spine. This isn't a rounding of the back until we get to this halfway point. When you start to wanna get head to knee, that's when you can mindfully think of rounding as you lower down even more and round by tucking the chin to the chest, which will round that upper spine towards the knee and bend the knee as much as you need to to get forehead to knee. A shoulder opener here, if you are not on the blocks, is to have hands in prayer down on the mat.
Breathe here. And change. Inhale, come up. We're going to turn everything over now to the other side. Hands are in prayer. I'm going to change the cross so that the other thumb is on top now. Micro bend that left knee as much as you need to to thoughtfully dive over that. And again, straight spine until we come at least halfway. I'll reach behind me, grab my blocks. If you aren't using blocks today, go ahead and bring those hands all the way down to the mat. Straight spine. Here I am halfway making that straight spine. Going to bend my left knee and then I continue the fold. Now I can round my back thoughtfully here by tucking the chin to the chest. Hands are still resting on the block or out in front of you. And bend the knee as much as you need to to let it meet your forehead. And change. Inhale. Come on up. Arms by the ears, keeps the core engaged, and then drop those arms to your side. Okay, our final standing posture is tree. So let's move to the middle of the mat for tree. Inhale, take a breath. Samasti tihi just means a sort of attentive focus, but at the same time with some relaxation in it. Like you would just kind of stand here all day comfortably. Samasitihi, and the pose itself is Tadasana. Okay, let's move into our tree. So we're going to stand strong on the left leg, windshield wiper, the right knee a bit to really open up the hip. My hip is popping quite a few times on the right side. So I want to watch and see how far my hip will let my knee go today because it's really up to the hip. So come up on your right toes and you can rest against your ankle, your calf, or bring it up your leg. If you've got your heel all the way up your inner thigh, you can move into the Bikram style tree, which is to catch that foot in your hand. And here's where it takes some hip opening. You don't wanna force this knee down. Just see how far your hips will let it go down. So I've had an injury on this side actually from doing an advanced tree and learn the hard way not to force it, just let gravity pull it down. And if your knee needs to stay up because your hips are tight, let it stay up. Here's our, I will stop talking and we'll take a breath here in stillness. Change, let that go. Careful with that leg as it comes out, give it a little stretch and love. And then we'll make sure to plant that right foot really firm and strong now. Windshield wiper, the left side. No popping on this side for me. Okay, and then you can figure out where your foot wants to be, whether it's at the ankle, the calf. Skip over the knee. Come up higher on the leg if you'd like. Again, if you're able to get that heel high, you may want to grab that foot with your hand to move into the Bikram version of tree. And you can see I'm more open on this side. My knee's okay with coming right down because I can let that knee drop on this side. I'm going to rest the foot in this shelf created in the hip crease. And that will allow me to release my hands, push them together at heart center here. And just take a breath. Change. Drop the hands. Let that go. Take a drink here if you'd like to, or if you want to head right down, lying on your back on the mat for Shavasana. We're going to move into the seated portion of the series. I'm going to open a window over here. Actually, you know, maybe I will. I get warmed up by the end of that standing series. And then when we come down to the floor, it's always a cool down. So you may have been noticing that too. I can't wait to get under heaters. <laughs> That's coming hopefully in the next few months when we um, open the studio. We've got some infrared heaters coming. It's an amazing style of heat um, that warms 
the air, instead of blowing heat, it just warms objects in the room. Um, it's great. It feels like sun on your skin when you're in the studio. Okay. On our backs here for Shavasana. Aaron, this next pose will be good for those hips. You get out of this pose what you put into it because it can be pretty passive or it can be a little more intense. So inhale, right knee up when you're moving pose. Pull that right knee towards your chest and then down the side towards the armpit as you hug it in. Turn on the left leg and here's where you can really become more forceful here with this pose. Turn on that left glute, it really opens the front side of the left hip as you squeeze and pinch the right hip and it's just this opposite diagonal force from the hips, uh, across the hips. One being really compressed and the other side open. And change, let's let that right leg go. Inhale, left leg up. Again, nice strong grip around the calves as you squeeze the left knee into the chest and then along the side and then turn on the right leg. Feel that diagonal opposite motion of the right hip being pulled, the left hip, or I'm sorry, the left hip being pulled and pinched down, compressed, the right opens and they're pulling apart from one another. Change, let that left leg go, right leg up, or I'm sorry, both legs up, hug the knees into the chest. And I'm gonna take a bit of a rock back and forth, um, both of my hip, the front of the hips now are being pinched in this rock, rocky motion back and forth. Just really is a nice massage on those hips, but then we do wanna come back to center, pull the knees into the chest, feel the length that creates in your spine and press your lower spine down on the mat, travel up to the upper spine and behind the neck by tucking the chin to the chest, lengthen the spine and change both legs down, find your Shavasana, palms up to the ceiling. And in these short Shavasanas, we don't typically close the eyes, keep the eyes open, but still be mindful of just letting that body, every part of your physical body just go as you take a breath. Inhale, arms overhead, skip this. If you have a back, bad back or wanna avoid sit-ups, otherwise we're gonna do a yoga sit-up. So we've inhaled, arms up, Exhale, sit up, two audible breaths. Come around and just touch those toes for a hamstring stretch. Turn around and lie down on your belly for belly down, Shavasana. We're moving, or I'm sorry, moving into Cobra. So down on your belly, hands planted under the shoulders, fingers spread wide. Bring the elbows in towards one another and in towards your ribs. Zip up your cobra tail from toes, ankles, all the way up your legs. One strong cobra tail in your legs. Exhale all the air out to prepare. Inhale, lift the chest, slowly peel the upper body off the mat using your lower back strength to lift the chest. Steady gaze forward. We don't wanna look up all the way to the ceiling. In fact, your gaze could still be just on the floor a few feet in front of you. Inhale, lift the chest. This is lower back strength, so maybe come up high on those fingertips so that you're not pushing in with your hands and then let it go. Belly down, Shavasana now. Left cheek on the mat. Palms up towards the ceiling. Take a breath here. Feel the front side of your body, your belly and chest and hips. Just um, sink into the mat in this belly down, Shavasana. Let's turn the palms over for half locus. Palms are down on the mat. Rock the hips back and forth and slide your fingers under your hips like you're bumping a volleyball. Chin down on the mat. Inhale, right leg up. Press that right hip bone into your forearm as you lift the leg. Find some length in it by pointing the toes and feel like someone's pulling it out and then lift, lift, lift. Again, find your peak lift there and then change, drop the right leg. 
let that leg relax completely as you press the left hip bone into your forearm and lift that leg. Lift, find some length, point the toes, feel it being pulled out, and then lift, 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 find the peak lift there, and then drop it down, let it go. Now we're gonna scooch the fingertips towards the knees as much as possible. From chin being on the mat, turn your mouth down and kiss the mat to protect the neck. Leave your mouth on the mat. And with legs together, toes pointed, we're gonna lift both legs off the mat. Change, let it go, unroll off those hands. Right cheek down this time, belly down, Shavasana, look to the other side of the room. Again, eyes are open, but the rest of the body is just completely relaxed. Okay, we'll move into full locus now. So bring the arms out to either side of you like airplane wings, arms straight out from the shoulders. Zip up your cobra tail, chin is on the mat once more. Exhale and relax everything, let it all become heavy. Inhale and lift it all up. Engage, lift the chest off the mat, lift the thighs off the mat. Everything lifts here. Arms lift like you're taking flight and just press those hip bones into the mat. Lift here, Superman, and let it go. Drop it down, left cheek to the mat, belly down, Shavasana. And all of that work we just did across lower and upper back has prepared us for floor bow. So you're ready to go. Bend to the knees, bring the heels towards the butt. Windshield wiper the legs a bit if you want with tight hips, um, that can feel really good either before or after this posture. We're gonna inhale, chest up, reach back towards the feet, just stay here if you don't have that grip. If you do, take the feet or ankles in your hands. Hands are on the outside here. Bring the shoulder blades together, squeeze them together. Maybe touch your nose or forehead down on the mat to kind of set to be neutral. Exhale everything out of your body. On the inhale, turn it back on. Kick against the hands and lift the chest off the mat. Lift the thighs off the mat. If you can, try rolling a bit on your belly and finally coming to rest on that upper belly so that thighs can lift even more off the mat towards the ceiling, a shape of a teardrop coming towards the ceiling here. And change, gently drop the knees, the feet and hands, right cheek on the mat for belly down, Shavasana. Take a breath and then we move into a yoga push up. So plant the palms under the shoulders once more, spread the fingertips and bring elbows together. Flip the toes so that your toes are tucked here. And then in one motion, lift yourself up like your body is a board. We come into plank, bend the knees here to walk them towards the front of the mat for fixed fern. So we come to the top of the mat, knees are together. I'm gonna open up the feet enough so that my hips can sink down. I'll grab my block here and set it between my feet. And then just lower the butt back towards the heels. You can rest on that block or you can use a pillow or blanket, a stack of books, whatever you need. Rest those hips on the feet. If you've got a straight spine here and you're ready to go a little further, take the block out and sink back a bit more so that the hips come between the heels. This may cause those knees to separate a bit in the front, which is fine. Again, if you've got the straight spine after each level of lowering down, you can put the hands on the heels, come down onto the elbows. If this is comfortable and you wanna lower all the way down, drop yourself down, spine on the mat, a slight arch in the lower back here. And then final expression, elbows above your head and just hang on to opposite elbows with your hands. So find your fixed burn, be able to stay in it comfortably. If you are screaming to get out of it at any point, then you've gone a little far and I just 
encourage you to back off into the next, into the previous stage that you had been in. So when I'm halfway here, I really want to make sure the belly is turned on, core is turned on to protect the spine as I come back up. Hi, buddy. There's the cat. Okay, we'll flip over those knees and lie down on our backs for Shavasana. Betty, the cat, loves it when I teach because um, the dogs aren't allowed to be inside, so Betty finally comes <laughs> and hangs out when she doesn't always get to because the dogs are in here. They get along okay, but, um, you know, she'd still rather just kind of be on her own. Okay, so lying back for Shavasana. Take a breath here. We're moving in that yoga sit up, inhale, arms up, exhale, sit up, shh, shh. touch the toes, come on to the back of the mat for half tortoise. So sit back on your heels. I'll take a moment in case you need a, a blanket or towel under the ankles, because this can feel pretty intense on the ankles and knees too. Inhale, arms up, find your prayer hands, and remember, arms overhead means an extra mindful moment of letting the shoulders drop away from the ears. Micro bend in the elbows and pull the belly in. As you dive over your legs, try to get your head or nose to the mat first. And then drop the blade of your hands and really press the blade side, the pinkies, making the blade into the mat. That'll lift and open at the armpits. Breathe here. And change, come back up. Core strength all the way, lifting us up, letting the arms go and lie down on your back for Shavasana. Just take a breath. Okay, let's inhale, arms up. Exhale, sit up. We'll come around to the front of the mat for camel. I have my block with me, so I'm gonna just put that between my inner thighs there. Squeeze the block with the inner thighs. You're stacked up, hips over uh, knees. Inhale, lift the chest. Put your hands in those back yoga pockets, chest lifted. Exhale, push the hips forward. Inhale, lift the chest. And just find this back bend here. If you are comfortable reaching back towards your heels with your hands, go for it. I think I'm gonna take it a little easy today and just keep pushing those hips forward. As I fall back on the upper body. And change, use your core strength to come out. Lie down on your back for Shavasana. So eyes open, some breaths here. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, sit up. Touch your toes, come around to the back of the mat for rabbit. So sitting back on the heels once more, just find your heels with your hands, make a connection there because you're gonna grip onto them as we get deeper into this fold. We're gonna inhale to prepare, lift the chest, roll the shoulders away from the ears and on an exhale, tuck the chin and just pull the belly button in. As you pull the belly button in with your chin tucked, you'll automatically begin to round down over your legs. Go ahead and let gravity bring you down into a little ball as much as you can with major rounding happening in the spine. When you get down towards the mat, start to lift the hips, grab the heels behind you with your hands, and with that bind of pulling onto the heels with your hands, you can really lift the hips even higher. Shoulders away from the ears, lift the hips. Pull the belly in, major rounding of the spine, Change, let go of the bind, keep your chin tucked all the way until the end. It is the last to come up and we'll lay down for Shavasana. Oh, 
Take a breath here. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, sit up. Touch your toes and let's bring it around for separate leg stretching. So middle of your mat, facing the front. Keep this left leg bent as you bring the right leg straight out. Or steady again. <laughs> uh, inhale up, find some length and, and um, stability by making sure you're sitting squarely over your hips. On an exhale, twist towards that outstretched leg and you can have arms overhead as you exhale, fold over that outstretched leg and just experiment every time with the stretch of what feels good. So it can be a stretch on the inner thigh, it can be a stretch on the hamstring as you lower down and bend the knees as much as you need to get the chest there. It can also be a side body stretch. If you open up, look at the ceiling there, make it dynamic by folding chest, head to knee, and then lift up again, whatever you feel like you need today. Change, come on up, bring the heel together, the legs out. <clears throat> Again, just get set with what you need the stretch to be. So left leg is out now, right knee is in, or right knee is bent and foot is in. Sit squarely over your hips. Inhale, arms up, and just make this what you want. So I'm going to exhale and twist bend over that outstretched leg. This side, as always, is a little tighter. So what I need on either side might look different. You can take that side body stretch. And it feels really good to make this one dynamic, moving back and forth, so. Okay, let's come out of that. Bring both legs out in front of you. Straight out there. Move the tissue from under you so that you are sitting on those sit bones. Inhale, bend the chest, lift the chest and bend the knees just a bit at least as you lower the chest down to lay, connect that belly with the thighs. For some of us, the belly connects a little quicker. <laughs> The belly has been connecting with the thighs for me a lot faster with each like week that goes on in quarantine. <laughs> food, baked goods that I'm eating. Anyway, go ahead and stretch out those hamstrings if you want by making that connection and finding a, a bind or a grip somewhere with your hands along your legs or toes. Just breathe. Okay, inhale it up, exhale, arms down. Let's move into our final posture before breath of fire, the final spinal, spinal twist. So with your right leg crossed over your left, just cross right leg over left and bring that right knee up to your chest, stamp your foot into the mat and bring, uh, keep your left leg straight or you can tuck that left leg under the right. So we've got Across here in the legs, sitting equally down on our sit bones. Inhale, chest up. Exhale, twist over the right side and find your twist. Lead with your belly button. Don't force it with your eyes or head. In fact, once you've gotten into some kind of twist here, relax the neck by shaking out the head and dropping the chin maybe towards that back right shoulder. Okay, change, let that go. We're gonna change the cross of our legs now. So left leg is coming on top, knees bent in, hug towards the chest, stamp the left foot down onto the mat. You can tuck that right one underneath or leave it straight either way. Equally sitting and straight here with the upper body to begin. Inhale, exhale, lead the twist with your belly. And find a connection there, twisting over to the left. 
And finally, when you've gotten comfortable in the twist, shake the head out to loosen the neck and maybe drop the chin towards the back left shoulder. And change, come on out of that. I'm gonna take one more sip of water here. Good time for a water break. If you'd like to take one before we start breath of fire, our final breathing exercise before we move down into Shavasana. Okay, take a few practice rounds by um, putting your hands on your belly if you want and feel that snap in of the belly as you exhale. Really make a nice loud breath, loud enough that someone in the room next to you might say, uh, why are you making those noises? Okay, so do that and feel that snap in. And then we'll rest the hands comfortably. Let the shoulders really relax down and chest lift belly will snap in. This is not only great exercise on controlling and using your breath, but also in your posture because it's also, it builds the core and helps you, helps your body have a nice muscle memory of good posture here while controlling the diaphragm and core. Okay. So let's inhale here together to prepare. Nice big open mouth exhale. Let all the air go. Empty it out, feel it empty all the way down from the pit of your belly, all of it out. Inhale halfway, and we begin. <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let it all go. Great job. Great, great job. We are ready for Shavasana. I ended right at nine o'clock today. Uh, my <laughs> little mini goal for this morning was to actually do it all in the time frame I was supposed to um, as my departing final Bikram session for you. So we have time now. We're going to take Shavasana for two minutes. You don't need to worry about the time. I will let you know when it is time to come out. So just lie down on your back. Take a nice, deep, comfortable breath and settle in. I will let you know when it's been two minutes and if you'd like to stay even longer than that, feel free. But we will just take time here. This is where you can close the eyes finally after just an hour of work and care and attentiveness towards your body. You can let it go now, let the body go, let the mind wander. Notice what's going on around you now that you can turn the focus off of you and what you're doing and onto everything that is happening around you now that you notice and where maybe it, it takes your mind. Notice that as well. Okay, yogis, it's been two minutes. Blink open the eyes if you'd like to come out. If 
not just stay there. But um, blink open the eyes and begin to make whatever subtle movements you need to to kind of bring yourself back. And stretch the arms overhead, wiggle the fingers or toes, whatever you need. We'll make our way into a seated position, but you do not have to rush to get there. Um, this one went really fast. I feel like it went faster. <laughs> this is the fastest it's gone for me teaching, probably because um, <laughs> partly I wanted to hold on to it <laughs> and just um, really notice and appreciate it being the last Bikram stream for, uh, for red pants. So we've got one more coming though for another stream. It will be Vinyasa on Friday. Um, I am not sure if I'm going to be streaming classes when I start teaching in the studio. Um, I will let you know. I'm going to keep this channel up and keep some of the red pants social media activity up so that I can give updates with what is happening with um, streams. We'll see. <laughs> I'm taking it one step at a time. And right now I've just got to finish painting the ceiling. <laughs> so um, I'll keep you updated though. And this has just been, it's been so fun and um, educational for me and helpful and I thank you so much for um, letting me do this here and being willing to be a participant and helping me learn um, so thank you so much for this Bikram series and for allowing me to practice teaching on you um, I hope it has been good for you. Thank you for your feedback that you've given me. And I will see you here again Friday for vinyasas. This isn't a complete goodbye, but if you have any questions regarding the Bikram series specifically, um, now in the next few days is a great time to send me a message um, before we kind of lose track on this channel and look for updates. For Swell Yoga Studio, there's a website, swellyogastudio.com. It's swell yoga.studio on Instagram, and you'll also find well Swell Yoga Studio on Facebook. Um, so thank you. That's my plug for what's coming next. And um, happy hump day, happy Wednesday. Hang in there, stay safe, stay healthy. Namaste to all of you and your loved ones. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste. All right. Thanks for you guys. It was so awesome to have you. Bye. I like the Shavasana on the golf course, by the way. I think that's a really good idea. Really good. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>